Hey, what's up coders? Hope you are doing well. Today we are implementing algorithms for calculating the mean, median and mode of a dataset with JavaScript. So some basic statistics today with JavaScript and before proceeding to coding, let's briefly discuss how we can calculate each of these dataset properties. First, for the mean, suppose we have this dataset consisting of seven data points, could be for example a test score for a group of seven students, and in order to calculate the mean, which is often represented by the X bar symbol, or the Greek letter mu if we are talking about population mean instead of sample mean, but let's not get into more details. So in order to calculate the mean, all we have to do is to sum up all data points and divide by the number of data points. In other words, the mean and more specifically the arithmetic mean, which is what we are calculating today, is what we usually call the average in everyday life. Although technically mean, median and mode are all kinds of averages, each trying to summarize the dataset with a single number representing a typical data point from the dataset. In our specific example, the mean is 42, so without looking at each data point individually, we can roughly conclude that this group of students with an average score of 42, let's say out of 100, didn't perform very well in the test. Next comes the median, which is the middle value of the dataset. So in order to get the median, we first need to sort the dataset, conventionally in ascending order, but we would still get the same result by sorting in descending order, and pick the data point in the middle. In this example, we have an odd number of data points, 7 to be specific, so the fourth element is in the middle. If we had an even number of data points, we would get the mean of the two middle elements. So if for example we had 8 data points, we would get the mean of the fourth and fifth elements by adding them and dividing by 2. In our specific example, the median is 40. So half of the students scored less than that and half more. And finally, mode is the value in the dataset which occurs more often. If all values in the dataset appear with the same frequency, for example, if there are no repeated values, then the dataset has no mode. It is also possible for a dataset to have more than one mode. In our specific example, the number 25 occurs more frequently and therefore this is the mode. So there you have it, the mean, median and mode. Here are the numbers for our specific dataset. We can't say that one is better than the other, they are just different approaches for calculating the typical or central value of a dataset. That's why they are also called measures of central tendency. Usually they are used in conjunction with measures of spread or dispersion in order to get the degree to which data is distributed around the center. Such measures of spread are the range, which is the difference between the maximum and minimum value of the dataset, and variance, or standard deviation, which is the square root of variance. Today, however, we are only implementing algorithms for measures of central tendency. And finally, it's coding time. Let's go! Okay, in our editor, I'm using the Visual Studio Code editor. I've created a JavaScript file, which I named statistics.js. In order to run the code for this file and display the results here in the output so that we don't have to open the project in the browser, I'm using the code runner Visual Studio Code extension. And as a starting point, we have three empty functions for the mean, median and mode, all taking an array as an argument for the data. Here we define a data array and log it in the console. Notice the use of template literals in here. 
In order to run the code, we can right click and select run code or using the keyboard control plus alt plus N. Let's run the code. And this is what we have so far. Ok, let's clear the output and start with implementing the min function. In order to get the mean, and by the way, we assume that input is a valid array of numbers, so we won't perform any input validity checks, we first need to calculate the sum of all elements in the array and then divide by the number of elements. One way to get the sum is with a for loop, so starting with sum equals 0, we can loop through each element in the array and add its value to the sum. So, after that we should have the sum and what remains is to divide by the number of elements and return the result. Ok, now let's uncomment this line in order to log the mean and save and run. Indeed, we get the mean for this dataset which is 42. Now, instead of using a for loop in order to calculate the sum of array elements, let's alternatively use the reduce method. And let me paste and try to explain. So, the reduce method executes the provided function for each value of the array from left to right, eventually reducing the array to a single value. A is the accumulator, it is the value that we end with, and B is the current array element. So here we add each element to the accumulator, and 0 is the initial value, it is the starting point for the accumulator. And that's all. I know at first the reduce method maybe looks kind of mysterious, but if you take some time to understand how it works, everything will make more sense. Ok, and instead of let, we could use const here for the sum since we are not reassigning its value, and if this was a larger project, we could even create a separate function especially for returning the sum of array elements, but that's not necessary now, let's save and run. Again, we get 42 for the mean, and if we add one more data point, let's say 98, almost perfect score, we expect mean to get higher. Indeed, we get 49 instead of 42, and if this goes 100, we would get 49.25, and it is up to us to decide what precision we want and how to handle rounding. Ok, let's proceed to implementing the function for the median. In order to get the median, we first need to sort the array and then get the middle value. To sort the array, we will use the sort method over the array. This by default sorts the values as strings in alphabetical and ascending order. So, if we wanted to sort numerically, then we should provide the compare function. And this way, we are sorting numerically in ascending order. If instead of a minus b here, we used b minus a, then we would be sorting in descending order. And once we have the sorted array, what remains is to get the middle element. But we first need to check whether array has an even number of elements or not. Instead of using an if statement, let's go with a ternary operator. So, if array has an even number of elements, or in other words, if the length of the array modulo 2 is equal to 0. In this case, we want to return the mean of the two middle elements. These are the indexes for the middle elements. So, if for example we had an array with 8 elements, then middle elements would be the 4th and the 5th. And since array indexing is 0 based, the corresponding indexes would be 3 and 4. 
Otherwise, in case of a not number of elements, we simply want to return the element in the middle. So, if for example we have an array with 7 elements, then we expect this index to be 3, since the element in the middle is the 4th element. Indeed, 7 divided by 2 is 3.5, rounded down to its nearest integer is 3. Ok, let's uncomment this line in order to also lock the median and run. We get that median is 40 and in order to make this a bit more obvious, let's also lock the sorted data array. This is the sorted data array with 7 elements in total and 40 is in the middle. Ok, let's add one more data point and run. This time median is 47, this is the sorted data array with 8 elements in total, these two are in the middle. 40 plus 54, 94 divided by 2 in order to get the mean. 47. Ok, and finally let's implement the mode function. In order to get the mode, we need to find which value or values of the data array appear more frequently. For this purpose, we will create a frequency table which will be an object with the data values as keys and their corresponding frequencies as values. And in order to fill in the frequency table, we have to loop through the data array. Let's do this with the for each method. So for each array element, we want to access the corresponding object property, notice that lm is the key, if such a property does not exist it will be created and we want to increase its value by 1. However, if this is the first occurrence then this will be undefined, undefined plus 1 is not a number which is not what we want, so in this case we want to set its value to 1. This will be falsy and therefore expression will be evaluated to 1. Once we have the frequency table, we will loop through in order to find which data value or values appear more frequently. This will be the mode. So initially modes will be an empty array since we could have more than one and we also set max frequency to 0. In order to loop through the frequency table object, we will use the for in loop which iterates over all object properties using the keys. I will paste and go through in order to accelerate a bit. So for each key, recall that keys are the various data values we first check whether its corresponding frequency is greater than max frequency and in this case we reset the modes array to an array containing a single value, the key, converted from string to number and of course we also have a new max frequency, the frequency of the key. Else, if the frequency of current key is equal to max frequency, in this case, we add the key to the modes array using the push method. As a final step, we need to check whether all dataset values appear with the same frequency. In this case, the dataset has no mode. So, if modes.length is equal to the total number of keys of the frequency table object, in this case, modes is set to an empty array. And finally, we return the modes array. And that should be it. Now let's uncomment this line in order to also lock the mode.
and we get that mode for this dataset is 25. Indeed, 25 is repeated twice while all other values only appear once. If there were no repeated values in the dataset, for example, let's change this 25 to 32. In this case, the dataset has no mode. If we add one more data point repeating 54, so now the dataset has two values which are repeated twice, 25 and 54. In this case, the dataset has two modes, 25 and 54. As a final note, let's suppose that the person entering the data accidentally entered 540 instead of 54. So this data point is now an outlier. If we run, we can see that the mean doesn't make much sense anymore. On the other hand, this has little effect over the median and mode. So in general, the mean is much more sensitive to extreme values than the median or mode, and that's a fundamental difference between them. Okay, that's all guys, feel free to expand on this, maybe by also calculating measures of spread or other statistical values, that would be a nice exercise. And you could even take it a step further by creating a user interface, maybe a statistics calculator. I hope you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. If you did, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Until next time, keep coding, keep improving and enjoy the journey. Take care. Bye. Ah, and remember, don't be mean, be above average. <laughs> okay, bye.